Welcome back to uh, the Cube. We're here at IBM Storage Edge 2012. I'm here with my co-host David Floyer. I'm John MacArthur, president of Walden Technology Partners. Uh, David is the co-founder of Wikibon, and uh, we are here today with Dan Shea. Dan is VP of Storage uh, Sales and Solutions for IBM East, uh, of our Eastern U.S. Uh, region. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, this is a um, this is a step up party for IBM. Absolutely. Um, you you have a you you run a lot of customer events and partner events. IBM, you know, uh, partner world is huge. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But, but this is very focused on storage. Why'd you do it? Well, for a couple of reasons. One is we, we took a, a toe in the water approach last year and we had a couple of local events that were just so well attended by both IBM customers as well as um, clients or, or prospects who were thinking about um, doing something with IBM. And we saw the, 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 in the two local events how successful they were. We decided to take it really national this year. And your partners are telling me, we had a couple of partners on earlier today, so they've been asking this, asking for this for a while. Absolutely. So you raise, know, the, raise the volume a little bit? Yep, and uh, you know, we've, we've combined kind of three different events, the executive edge, the technical edge, and then the partner uh, winning edge also. So with the three different events, we've actually combined it so that everyone can get uh, both a lot more networking as well as a lot more technical and, uh, and sales support here. So it's been really great so far. So, so what's the reaction been from the customers? Uh, I'd say our customers were, have been, actually everyone's told me that they've really enjoyed it, that the information that they're getting has been very uh, very well received. Uh, the new announcements I think are, are generating some real buzz and there's some, some real excitement mm -hmm. there. And then uh, from a partner perspective, again, we've got, I, I think it's over 250 or 300 partners here with us. And uh, we had an event, uh, BP Forum, last yesterday with them. And again, the, the, the feedback has been phenomenal, both from a, a, a content perspective as well as everyone enjoyed the entertainment last night. Yeah. Yep. So how many people have you got here this year? I think I, the number I heard was 2,100 is what we have. 2,100, yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's a good number for, so this is the first year. Yeah, for an inaugural yeah. event, yep. Right. And uh, yeah. you know, we, I was talking to Dion Newman, who is really the mastermind who pulled all this together, and he's talking about you know trying to do four, five or six thousand next year. Well, so what is it? EMC World is up in the uh, EMC World is up to ten thousand. No, no, eight thousand. Yeah, I think 15, it was ten last yeah. year and fifteen, 15 or close this, to fifteen yeah. this yeah. year, so, something yep. like that. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's and, large and again, numbers. ours, uh, you know, ours is more storage specific, where mm. EMC is branched out to a lot of different areas, obviously. But um, mm. you know, the other thing we really try to focus on is not to make this just a hardware event, right? Because the hardware is interesting, but until you start layering the software on top of it, so you know, if you go into the main ten session. You'll see that it's about 50-50 in terms of our, our STG or uh, systems and technology group leaders as well as our software leaders. Yeah, well, I've, I've been in a lot of the events and uh, it's, yes, you've got a good software and, and hardware mix. Yeah, yeah. 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 And with, uh, you know, big data and, you know, cloud and things like that, that's really, it's all enabled with software. So it's very important that we take all of IBM, our hardware, our software, and our services, and we lay it on top of each other to really give the solutions to our, to our clients that they really want. Yeah, but we also heard uh, just in, in the in the last segment with Essex Tech, they all, there are also times when they need you to be best of breed, right? Because sometimes they are just heads to head, head to head in a best of breed. It's not necessarily where they are all the time, but seventy percent of the time they're they're integrated solution, and maybe thirty percent of the time they're competing on a best of breed sort of decision. So when you think about the announcements this week that you made, what are the what are the areas where you think you can come out and say, hey, I am best of breed? Um, by far, the, the biggest best of breed announcement for, for this, this conference is our compression technology. I don't know if you guys were in the, uh, the discussion around that, but we've delivered real-time compression on file-based um, uh, data for a couple of years now. What we announced this week is, is the compression on block-based data. It's something that no one else can do from a real-time perspective. And uh, Ed Walsh, who actually did the uh, the announcement, he used the analogy that I thought was very uh, that was very simple in terms of how we differentiate ourselves. Ed said, "What everyone else does, if I have a hundred k, you know, write coming in to a two megabyte file, what everyone else does is they uncompress the two megabyte file, they they do the hundred k update, and then they compress the two hundred megabyte fi file or the two megabyte file, and they send it back to the disk." What we do is we real-time compress that 100K and we go and update that file directly. So it's real-time compression where you don't have the overhead of 
uncompressing and then recompressing the file. So it is really going to be an, ex an, a, an exclusive for us as well as a competitive advantage for both us and our partners. So what kind of a difference is that going to make in terms of, sort of storage capacity requirements for the customer? What kind of ROI are they going to have from a... From and, uh, and let me just mm. put a little wrinkle in that. Sure. I mean, there, there's two costs, isn't there? There's cost of I.O. and there's the cost of the actual storage itself. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, if you save some of the storage, you don't necessarily save on the I.O. and the controller and all of that overhead because you've got a certain number of I.O.s to yep. do. So what, what's a reasonable figure for in terms of a ROI? Or um, what, what we're telling our customers and our partners is that if you have a hundred terabytes of storage that, um, that the requirement by 50 terabytes and with our compression technology, it'll cost you about 70% of that 100 terabytes. So we think it's a 30% 30, 30 savings, right. and, that, and, and we think that's actually conservative. Good. That's if you get a 50% yeah. compression rate. Right. And that's a reasonable rate to, yep. uh, to yeah. achieve. We, yeah. uh, well, again, if you, the Iburst guy who, who spoke yesterday said they got 80%. So if you get 80%, then you're, you're talking you know, an order of magnitude even better of, of saving that 30%. Uh, are there particular data types that are uh, more easily compressible and so, so where are you guiding your customers? Yeah, to? I mean text, so anything in a database is, is going to be that 80%. If you start doing video or, or, or JPEGs or something like that, it'll be closer to zero. So, <laughs> but, but one of the just other, to be yeah, clear. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the other things that we actually are delivering is something, uh, and I'll, I'm sure I'll get the name wrong, but I think they were calling it the compressinator, which is a, a compression <laughs> estimator that you can actually put on your system to see what kind of compression results you should expect. And is that a free tool? It's something that you can actually get off the web. Okay. Okay, so they can take it off the web, yep. apply it themselves. I think, actually, the I'm, I'm not positive it's, it's available right now because I think that they wanted our systems engineers to be the first ones to give it a try and stuff like that, but it will be generally available for people so they okay. can go out and test it. But, take, but keep an eye out for the compressionator, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I like that. We should get Arnold Schwarzenegger to be the, uh, to be the person that actually announces that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you should. I don't know. His reputation has been up and down. You're right. right. So. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so you might want to think about that. Sometimes uh, having started do stuff for you can, can lead to un un unintended consequences. I understand that one. <laughs> so, well, that, that's good. So, uh, any other areas that, uh, th that you're seeing? So again, that was definitely the big highlight of the announcement. We had over 20 announcements though. Um, you'll see some, some, uh, some additional add-ons to our, our linear tape file system. I don't know. Yeah, if that, I, I saw the, uh, the so, so a file system interface to uh, linear tape open. Yep, yep. so basically you can mount a tape now like an NFS mount, with an NFS mount. So it's a very interesting technology. Um, we're getting the most um, interest from the media and entertainment, uh, right. you know, the, because so, Sony's yeah. moving away from their video, their proprietary video format, and the industry's really looking for something that's both open and portable, which LTFS is. And you're going to need to migrate a bunch of data then, Absolutely, right? absolutely. There, there so you have a data migration solution that you can apply to that? So actually, yeah, we're working with some of the um, some of the, the media industry now to actually develop a lot of the software around the technology that we delivered, because there's also indexing capabilities that you need and things like that. So um, the LTFS, the, the hardware and the NFS um, interface was really our first foray, which was about a year ago, and then we're announcing additional uh, um, software technology that we're laying on, layering on top of it this year. What's the, what's the competitive landscape look like there? Again, I mean, you're up, no one else has anything like LTFS. So from that perspective, it's very different. And again, the, the competitors in the past have been like, uh, have been things like the, uh, the, Sony, the Sony video format and that, that type of thing. So I'm sure there will be some places that, um, that want to look for disk solutions. I think it really depends on the size of your library and what you're trying to do with it. But I actually was talking to um, someone in the healthcare industry and they're, they're interested in can we use this for, um, for radiology images and other, other types of images um, just because there, there's so much data that they're dri driving now that they're always looking for a more cost-effective solution to, to store that data. Right. So can you talk about that again, the business case here, which is always of interest to me. Um, how much, I mean, uh, so a lot of your competitors don't like tape at all. I, I take every opportunity to knock tape. Um, Those are the ones that don't have a tape solution, right? <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure we're talking about the same ones. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, but so, w w uh, what is the, from, from a real world perspective, what is the cost 
case, you know, how much can you save by yeah. staying on tape? And I, I will tell you that I don't have the numbers other yeah. than, you know, once you get over about, I believe it's about 50 petabytes, but again, um, someone else can give you can give you the actual yeah. ROI case, but that's where tape becomes less expensive and will continue. So anyone who's got a massive library is going to have big savings on, uh, on tape. It's still the cheapest, most affordable, and best ROI for long-term long-term solution. Right. Yeah. But you've got to have 50 petabytes. Um, I, I actually, I'm not positive if that's the number or not. Mm -hmm. um, that's for some reason, that sticks. Data, yeah. But again, if you're talking about you know a Warner Brothers mov movie studio, oh, that's it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. it's a tiny piece of their yeah. library. You know. Yeah. So right. again, that's why you know um, things like LTFS are are more interesting to them than to uh, to other people. A lot of uh, emphasis on the media business. Anything else in this tape area that's uh, ripe for exploitation of L uh, LTFS and the other? We used to do a lot of writing to tape um, uh, of scientific data, but that wasn't file data, right? Or, or was it? Yeah, sure. Actually, well, it was, actually yes. some of that is yes, file. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, you mean the uh, geophysical? Yeah, data. geophysical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. So yeah, what are the other applications? You know, I, you're not sure. I'm okay. not. I'm not, right. I'm not. I'm not positive where else. Like I said, I just know where we've actually, uh, you know, started uh, working with customers. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about you. You have a strong background in uh, partner management, uh, partner channels. How, yep. how are your partners reacting to uh, to this event? And and how are, what are you looking for from your partners? What do you want them to do? So again, I've gotten very good feedback from our partners. As I said, we did a partner forum yesterday, where uh, you know, basically the, the leaders of our uh, both our storage organization and our North American organization were there to, to meet with all of our partners. And uh, you know, partners look for a few things. One is they look for great products, and I, I think every one of my pro of my partners would agree that we've got the strongest product line we've had in probably forever in IBM. So very competitive, and again, things like um, the V7000 and SVC really differentiate us in the marketplace. So they're looking for a strrong product line, but also that differentiation that you and I talked about earlier, so that they can go out and, and be differentiated in front of their customers. The other thing that, um, that they're uh, very keen on is um, skills, because if you look at it, the partners when they compete against each other, they compete based on on the skills that they can bring, both in a pre-sales and a post-sales support, as well as anything else they're, they're, they may be developing or wrapping around our solutions that can differentiate them from from uh, uh, their competition also. So we've we've put a big emphasis on education this year, both in, within our own team, but also in our partner organization. We actually created um, a partners mastery program. And we've also created something, um, a, a program where um, a partner can be a, a uh, an elite member of our storage organization and get different benefits because of the uh, the investments they make into selling IBM storage. Are you, um, IBM partners have tended to be uh, pretty loyal partners. Um, uh, are you? How are you sort of rewarding them? So um, we have a lot of partners who have done just tremendous jobs for us. We continue to work very closely with them. And again, the rewards can come in kind of uh, a number of different flavors. One is obviously monetary awards. We try and make sure that, that our partners are making a, you know, a great living on, on selling IBM uh, technology. But that's not what's going to differentiate us. What's going to differentiate us is how we go to market with them. Um, and what our partners would tell you is, um, listen, IBM, I don't need you all the time, but when I need you, I need you, and I need deep expertise um, in the areas that, that I usually call on you for. So they will handle you know, 90 plus percent of the opportunity, but when they need us, they, they'd like to have us. So we've developed a technical organization that actually will um, is available to any partner out there that can re and where they can reach out to get deep technical expertise, whether it be in a specific product or a specific solution area. And I think they they um, they very much appreciate the fact that they can get that technology or that 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 deep expertise when they need it. What's the biggest misperception of IBM uh, that you face when you go out and meet with customers? Um, the biggest misperception. I don't I don't know if I've uh, thought about that one. You know, I, I would tell you um, that. 
IBM's come a long way in terms of being client-centric and trying to do things, make things easier in terms of doing business with us. Um, I've been with IBM for 29 years now. Um, 29 years ago, people told us we were the hardest company in the world to do business with. Um, some people still have that perception today. And, you know, I, I don't know that I've got a lot of, of um, outside expertise to tell me if we are the hardest or not. What I can tell you is we've come a long way in terms of ease of doing business. And we've made a lot of changes both in our, in our channel uh, channel programs to be, make it easier for our partners as well as directly with our clients also. So uh, how, does, how does the Pure Systems, Pure Flex, Pure, uh, how, how's that going to change your relationship with the, uh, your business partners? And how, how are you going to market with, the, with them, with those products? Actually, um, if anything, it's going to deepen our relationship with our partners. Um, if you look at Pure Systems um, and Pure, F Pure Flex specifically, it's a lot of the products that our, our partners have been selling anyway. The issue is, or the, the, the difference is, they've done a lot of the integration in front of the customer, where with Pure Flex, it's going to, it's going to be, we're going to do the integration and ha have them deliver it. And in doing so, we'll lower their costs. They won't have to do all that integration. We'll actually do it, and yet they'll still be able to deliver a a, a fuller system to the end user. So, um, again, all the you know since PureFlex has come out, um, all my partners have told me that it's absolutely going in the right direction and it's the right thing to do both for them, but but specifically for our clients. You know, if you look at how much time our clients spend doing things like you know setting up the systems and getting them ready for their uh, their. Uh, um, their end user customers, if we can you know, eliminate that time and take that time down to plug it in and start working, they're gonna, th there's going to be great value there in terms of really time to value from a business perspective. We had Jim Torney on from Essex Tech uh, just uh, prior to you, and, and, and Jim, was talking about, uh, uh, Jim was talking about turning some of his business to a re recurring revenue model, and he was, uh, and it was looking to use Pure Systems as, uh, Pure Flex as, as sort of the infrastructure for that. Yep. How, what percent of your how do, how do you see your partners sort of evolving from that recurring rev to that towards that recurring revenue model? I think um, a, a large number of my partners like the idea of setting up their own cloud infrastructure and being able to to basically host stuff on behalf of their customers to to drive that reoccurring revenue structure. And they see Pure Systems really as the infrastructure because again, the simplicity of it as well as the, the fullness of it in terms of being able to deliver an entire system to the customer, they see it as a way to get into this business at a lower cost than having to build it all themselves. So it's really an entry point for them or a jumping off point for them to actually get into this business. Um, some are already there, a lot have talked about it, and I think Pure Systems will just be the, the, the little nudge that they need to actually get in and start that business. Well, Dan, I appreciate you joining us here today. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Dan Shea, uh, VP of Storage Sales uh, and Solutions at uh, IBM. I'm John MacArthur here with uh, David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon uh, on, on uh, SiliconANGLE TV at the IBM Storage Edge 2012 conference. Uh, we'll be right back after.